Welcome back guys to another brand new video today and based on a lot of previous requests I'm going to be doing a five ways to improve your standard shopping results with Google Ads. I've had a lot of people reach out to me recently saying they're struggling with this so these five pointers are things you can change and tweak either on your website or your ad account and hopefully we'll begin to see better results. Now just before we do jump into this any further if you're struggling with Google if you want to introduce Google as a channel for your business and you're a bit intimidated by it or if you're simply just not seeing the results you'd like to then please please go ahead and get in touch with my Google Ads agency. We specialize and work with e-commerce businesses. So if you want us to take a look and potentially work with us, then go ahead and click your top link in the description. Now I'm just gonna jump straight into this. And one thing is extremely key here, and it is arguably one of the most important things when it comes to Google Shopping, because it's the first thing a person is drawn to when they make a Google search for a particular product, and that is the product image. Now I'm gonna use the example here of a frying pan, simply because I was looking for a new one about half an hour ago. So you can see on this Google search here that every single one of these images has a white background except for a few different ones which all have black backgrounds but it's all from the same brand being Hexclad. Now Hexclad are up on the sort of premium end of pricing for cookware. Gordon Ramsay uses them and things like that so it's a great sort of website and business to almost do a mini case study on and because whatever they're doing is clearly working because they're growing at a rapid rate and things are just going really well for them but my point is here with the imagery you've got to stand out from your competition and there's a few ways you can do this you can go ahead and perform a google search on your particular product or type of products and you'll quickly get an idea about what your competition is doing so if you're selling cookware frying pans and things like this a quick google search will clearly show you that every other brand is using a white background so automatically you're going to think okay how can i stand out from this and these guys have done it perfectly simple black background now this isn't always going to be a case of just changing the background color of your product because there's a lot of other types of products that could require a lifestyle image to perform better and a perfect example of this is you know i've searched here sunglasses for women you can see every single product again has a white background now there's nothing wrong with using a white background it certainly works for some products because it displays them in sort of the clearest way possible without any sort of outside interference but if I was one of these brands what I would definitely be testing is having a picture here with the sunglasses on a model's face because no other product here is doing this and a lot of the time people want to see the product being used for example so these sunglasses showing them on someone's face is gonna make the customer understand what they actually look like on a person you know it'll give them a better idea on the size the fit and things like that so there's a lot of different angles you could think of when it comes to sort of different imagery like this but the best way to get an idea of what you should test rather than sort of blindly testing random things is just google search and see what your competition are doing and just literally do the opposite because in most cases you will see a clear pattern of what most of the competition is doing on google shopping so to stand out you've got to do something a bit different and again these two examples here are sort of a prime example of what you can do differently to stand out and very quickly obviously what this then leads to is an increase in click-through rate a higher click-through rate makes your ads more relevant Google's gonna push your products further up the ranking and overall if you're showing your product in the best way possible the conversion rate is probably going to increase on the other end on your website as well now point number two is going to be the SEO title and descriptions for your product going back to the frying pan here you can clearly see that not a single product here's title is simply just frying pan I know it sounds very silly but you'll be surprised the amount of people that come to me saying you know my products aren't getting any impressions or clicks or they're just not performing and one of the big reasons is is because the, the name of the product they're submitting through their Google feed into their merchant center is very plain and there's not enough sort of going on and it's very sort of just poorly optimized to be honest so if you just got frying pan in there you're not going to really compete with people like this who have got loads of different keywords in these titles and descriptions so what you want to do you want to go into your products on Google merchant center edit the title and the description cram as many keywords in there as possible don't go overboard and start including irrelevant stuff you want to keep it relevant it doesn't have to be too long I usually keep mine to about 70 characters for the title and I think it's about 250 characters for the uh, description now obviously you can't see the description here but Google takes into account the title and the description to then appropriately rank and display your products with you know the relevant search terms and just to clarify this isn't the Shopify title and description or the, the title and description of the product that's shown on your website this is the merchant center product title 
title and description. So you can edit it on there, it's not gonna affect what's shown on your website, so do not worry. And a good way of finding relevant keywords if you're struggling, simply go over to the Google Keyword Planner, which you'll be able to find in the Tools section of your Google Ad account. Search one of the main phrases or words for your product, and it will give you loads of other different relevant keyword terms you can include. So obviously frying pan here, for example, you'd wanna put something like non-stick frying pan, you can see good search volume. This is for the UK anyway, but obviously the US is gonna be more. Non-stick is quite common here. You can do other things clearly, like the, the use case of them, so a crepe pan, for example. Include the material of it, cast iron, ceramic, and things like that. So if you are struggling, just use the Google Keyword Planner, because that will give you plenty of ideas that you can include in those SEO title and descriptions. Now, number three is gonna be product pricing. Obviously, Google is a very competitive network and way to advertise your products. Because you're showing against other competitors, and one of the things people are seeing here is obviously the product price. Now, people automatically think that they need to then be the cheapest here to get the clicks and the sales and things like that. I can assure you that is not the case at all. And a prime example, again, Hexclad. They're the most expensive brand you can see here, but look how many places on this shopping ad reel that they're dominating and they're the most expensive. It's because they've built a brand. They've not just built a rubbish drop shipping store. They're solidifying themselves as a almost premium sort of market leading brand when it comes to cookware. And therefore they can charge a premium for it. So if we just quickly go over to their website and you can just see how clean, modern, different it looks as well. You know, you've got a very nicely laid out product page here, big imagery, high quality imagery that they've taken obviously themselves. A clear, concise sort of brief here with, you know, lots of icons which are often useful for products like this. But obviously if you then want the more detail, you can scroll down and you've got lots of, you know, FAQs, imagery, reviews and things like that. So obviously you need a good quality product to charge the higher prices. But if you make your website and business premium feel, very high quality, good website, then people are going to be willing to pay higher prices for your products and by doing so you, you can have more room to work with with your advertising budget whereas if you're charging the bare minimum you're simply not going to make any money with google ads so i guess this is a good point for people or businesses that are already for example generating sales with a product just go ahead and increase the price by five pound or ten pound and just just try it for a week you know a simple then look back if your conversion rate decreased if it increased if it stayed the same you'll be surprised the amount of times a conversion rate doesn't drop with a slight price increase it might not necessarily improve the results and number of conversions you're getting in the Google shopping campaign but you're going to be earning more profit for your business which will allow you to spend more to acquire a customer and advertising is forever becoming more competitive and more expensive so these higher profit margins are definitely needed now point number four is going to be testing different bidding strategies a lot of people will run maximized clicks because they think oh I'm going to get the most traffic for the cheapest price more people on my website surely I'm going to sell more products that is not the case at all I like to bluntly say that maximize clicks 99% of the time is the poorest quality traffic you can get from advertising on Google and people quickly realize that when they use it they'll get a thousand visitors and not a single sale type thing like that so forget about maximize clicks I would say at this stage now with advertising manual CPC really isn't the way to go unless you really are limited with budget and really want to be so efficient and not waste any ad spend basically and you're bidding really low essentially with manual CPC but two ones to focus on 100% are target ROAS and target CPA. For me I use target ROAS more frequently than target CPA but target CPA definitely does work. Now granted a lot of people do use these bid strategies but they'll sort of be greedy and overshoot what they're asking Google to do for example. So an example here on my UK business you can see I've got a standard shopping campaign 220% target ROAS. Now a lot of people will go in at four five hundred percent thinking, oh, that'd be lovely, you know, I'm gonna spend a pound and for every pound I spend, I get four or five times the amount back. Obviously that would be brilliant, but it's not gonna happen. And people then wonder why these campaigns aren't spending any budget. It's cause you're being unrealistic with your goals. A lot of the time Google doesn't have the data to achieve these sorts of results. So the way I would structure this, if you're struggling is set your target ROAS or your target CPA just slightly above your break even point and don't touch it for at least 30 days. And that way you're almost sort of Guaranteeing is the wrong word because it can never be 100% guaranteed. But if you make a slight loss, then you're going to probably break even. Whereas if you are achieving that lower ROAS that you've set, but that's above a break even ROAS, then you're going to be making a little bit of profit. And over time, you're going to be building up the conversion data in the account. And then over time, you can gradually increase it. I'm experimenting with having this much lower to increase volume. This was around 300% for most of its lifetime, this campaign. I actually decreased this to 220 yesterday to encourage more spend. And you can see today, one ad group is less than a one ROAS, but the other one, £57 spent 11 ROAS, which is just ridiculous. So the overall ROAS today, 
six, but the target is only 2.2 or 220%. So I guess my point is here, start it low, gradually work it up. If you want volume, set it lower, but please don't be changing your target ROAS or target CPA every day. Just set it, leave it. I usually, when I make a change, I want to leave it for at least a month just to allow it to do its thing. Changing it every day is just not a good idea. Okay, and point number five is keyword management. It's simple search term management, which people just don't do because they're often lazy. And it is probably one of the most boring things to do in a Google ad account. It takes time, but it, in the long run, you're gonna be saving wasted ad spend, irrelevant terms, and you know, essentially making your campaign more optimized yourself because you'll be excluding irrelevant terms and overall just improving that optimization of the campaign. Even if you just do it once a month, I do it once every two weeks on my standard campaigns, but even if you do, let's say last 30 days, for example I usually filter it by cost here and then you simply just check you know for example this keyword here has spent 33 pound in the last 30 days it has had I mean zero conversions basically so I know long term this phrase for example does convert so I'm not going to exclude it but if you've got a term like this that is spending regularly on a monthly basis and isn't getting you any conversions simply exclude it you may take an hour it may take two but trust me when I say in the long run you'll benefit massively from this because even just looking at the first two, three, four hundred keyword terms are spending on these campaigns, you'll quickly find that some completely irrelevant terms are going to be appearing and simply excluding those is going to avoid future wasted ad spend, which could otherwise go on, you know, profitable terms. So I hope this video hasn't dragged out too long and these five points are going to be, you know, useful to you and you can implement them with your ad accounts. Now, I didn't go into too much detail about each point, but if you want any sort of specific videos on them, please do let me know. If you want me and my team to take over your Google ads, please Please click the add raw link to my Google Ads agency in the description below. But other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.